Hi everyone, this is Carla with Bijou Alpacas and I am bringing you the third lesson in our Marketing for Alpaca Breeders series. And today we're going to start moving beyond the introductory material and this is going to be a much longer lesson as I'm going to start demoing some of the things that I will be talking about. So for today's lesson we're going to talk about mainly search engines and understanding keywords. Today there are three main drivers for obtaining visibility in the online marketplace, search engines, YouTube, and social media. For a complete online marketing strategy, you need to understand and leverage each of these together. So for today, this lesson is going to focus on search engines and understanding keyword use and how those work together with the main search engines of Google and Bing. When I looked at some of the research for 2014 to see what are the main search engines, of course, Google ranks number one with about 67% of this share, Microsoft's Bing and other sites with 20%, Yahoo with 10%, Ask with 2%, and AOL coming in with 1%. So you can see with Google and Bing taking up about 87% of the search engine market, it really makes sense for us to mainly talk about um, doing keyword research with Google and Bing in mind and any advertising that we do uh, as far as direct ads, we really should be focusing on Google and Bing. So. As far as doing keyword research, there are several free sites and there's also some paid tools which I won't be talking about today. The main tool that I will be talking about is Google's AdWords um, and AdWords has a tool called the Google Keyword Planner Tool which can be used for not only buying ads but you can just use it for research even if you don't plan on placing any ads. You will need to open up a Google AdWords account to use this tool, I believe. Um, I've had an AdWords account for some time, so I'm not sure if you can do it with a, without an account. So this uh, screen just shows, and here I'm going to stop and switch over to my demo. So here I'm already logged into the Keyword Planner. And if they can just follow along, I will show you how we can search for keywords and get ideas for new keywords. So we're just going to want to search for the new keyword and add group ideas. And for this demo, I'm just going to type in alpacas. And you can see we can actually target and filter our search. So I'm just targeting United States. English and Google at this point. So now I'm just going to click on the Get Ideas and we wait a little bit. And what we get is a nice graph showing us the searches or the volume of searches. Go up a little bit here. So the Keyword Planner actually takes the keywords and groups them into ideas or kind of themes. So if I was to click on like alpaca blankets, I would see that all of them relate to blankets, sweaters, yarn, and such. Of course, for alpaca breeders, we're going to want to more focus on alpaca farm and buy alpacas. But what I really want to show you is this Keyword Ideas tab. So I'm going to click on that and scroll down. So now you'll see that just the plain term alpacas has 9,900 monthly searches, which is pretty good. Um, the competition is low, and that's, that's a very good sign. Um, but here are suggested bid per click. If we were going to buy an ad using that keyword, we would need to bid $1.57 per click. Uh, that's, that's fairly high. So what we want to do is now look at some other keywords that are related to alpacas and see what else we get. And what I usually do, I can click on any of these column headers and uh, sort so obviously I don't really care about land for sale. 
I may care about baby alpaca. I don't care about farms for sale. Let's see if I can find one that's a little bit more in line with what we're trying to do. And you'll also see that there'll be misspellings and you want to bid on those too because obviously not everyone will spell it correctly. Okay, let's see what the next page has for us. And you can see right now it's pulling up 801 searches. Okay, here's a good one, Surrey Alpaca. Now you can see that there's only 480 searches and the competition is low and that's good. But look at the suggested bid price. I'm not sure why that's so high. Um, but that's something that I probably wouldn't bid on because that is so high. Let's look what else we have here. Okay, I'm going to go one more. So basically what this is showing us is that we can pull up many different keywords that people have searched on but you want to be careful you don't want to really pick on like what is alpaca um, that's somebody who's maybe writing a paper or something so uh, somebody that's wanting to know what is an alpaca we pr they're probably not in the market to buy an alpaca so and what you can do when you go through here and you find a bunch of words like how or what you can actually add those to your negative keywords. So I'm going to put in how, and I'm going to put in what. I may have to put those on separate lines. I don't remember. Okay. So now, should go. Okay. So now it's taken those as negative keywords, and what it's done is it's removed anything that has the words how or what in it. So that can help you narrow down. Um, also, I would want to get rid of land, socks, yarn, you know, unless I was specifically targeting the fleece or fiber market, then obviously you want to be more targeted for those kinds of things. Okay. I don't want to spend too much time here, but this, this is the main activity that I'm wanting to show you in this lesson. Okay, so once we have figured out some of the terms that we want to use, we can create a plan. So we could, um, let's find one. So most people don't know that baby alpacas are Kriyas. Let's, so let's just say that I decided to add that to my plan. So it will add that to my list of keywords. But the other thing I can do, if I really narrow this down and I get a set to like 500, or I'm sorry, 50 to 100 keywords, what I can do then is either add them all to my plan or what I prefer to do is actually download it to an Excel spreadsheet. You can also uh, use this AdWords editor uh, comma delimited file, but I've never used that before. So I'm just going to download this list of 794 keywords, save it to my desktop, and then I can open that in Excel when I'm ready to use it. So what I went ahead and did earlier, even though it's kind of out of the scope of this talk, because um, I'm mainly just talking about how we can research keywords and use these planner tools, I actually did create a ad earlier. So what you need to do, if you, if you want to take this a step further and create an ad from your keywords, you would create a campaign. But I've already done that, so I've got a campaign called Alpaca Marketing, and I'm just going to click on that so you can see how that's set up. So uh, within a campaign, you have different ad groups. Um, I just made it the same name. And so when I click on that, this is where you will start to see my keywords. So obviously under keywords, um, 
alpacas, alpaca, alpacas for sale. So here you'll see that I'm much more targeting towards uh, alpaca breeders and people looking to buy alpacas or maybe just start and get some information on breeding alpacas. But you'll notice, um, so I have different various bids that I've placed and Google will actually tell you if your ad is below what the estimated first page is or to show up on the first page. So here I've bid uh, 30 cents and it's telling me well to show up on the first page you're really going to need to bid 95 cents so um, you know it's up to you how far you want to go with your bids and because alpaca is alpaca is going to be searched on a lot I'm going to go ahead and change those and these will change every day so you will want to go in every day and and look at your keywords to see how they're doing you will uh, right now this bit this uh, particular ad has not gone live yet so it's not showing any of the statistics that I'll show you here in a minute okay so I'm, I'm not going to go through and change all these right now um, and some of these I did, I did change earlier today, and they've already gone up since I changed them. And let's see. And also you'll see, so I wanted to focus on alpaca marketing since I'm kind of doing that with these lessons. And you'll see that there's a very low search volume on that. So that might not be something that I even want to try to create ads for. So once this ad does go live, you'll we'll start seeing how many impressions that it's getting when people search. You'll see how many clicks it gets, the ads get. You'll see the click-through rate, which is pretty important, and also your cost. Uh, you can set your campaign limits. This one right now is set to, I think, 5 or $10 a day. I don't remember what I set it to. Um, so this is my little ad that I created for Bijou Alpacas. Uh, the default bid I set at 30 cents. And uh, so when I set the default bid, that set everything here to 30 cents. And then I went through and I overrode that for particular ones that I thought that I cared that they get a little higher in their ranking. So the next thing I wanted to discuss, um, as I mentioned with the Google Keyword Planner, I downloaded some of my keywords to a spreadsheet and uh, this isn't quite what it looks like. This is what it looks like after I've played with it for a little bit. So there is an alternative to Google AdWords. Google AdWords is quite expensive, expensive as you saw. So I took my keywords and I put it in the spreadsheet and I came over to Bing ads. Bing ads are at this time are a lot more reasonable. So I created the same ads in Bing. And I will show you how that looks. So I'm already, it's, it's set up, once you learn AdWords or Bing, you can kind of go back and forth and you'll see that they're very much alike. And so if you learn one, you'll know how to do the other one. So here um, I have a campaign, Bijou Alpacas. Um, and again, I've got an ad group. You can call that anything you want. It doesn't really matter. Um, you want to set your language. I've got English here. You want to decide what locations you want your ads to show. And I picked uh, states around Colorado and gave Colorado a 50% increase uh, so more ads would show in Colorado. Um, this is my default bid, 75 cents, and this content network I set really low to 5 cents because these ads show up in people's blogs, websites, and those people looking at those banner ads or, or, or text ads may not have been looking for alpacas, so I really don't want to spend a lot on those um, keywords. <clears throat> You will also want to change your schedule. So right now, uh, I had this set differently, but I just uh, accidentally skipped on and uh, clicked on that. I have mine scheduled for about nine o'clock in the morning to eleven o'clock at night. 
Also, you want to decide what gender you want to target. Um, I have mine increased to 80% for females just because I'm trying that out. And you can obviously change that around and test different things. Um, right now, I'm focusing on this age demographic, 35 to 64. And I'm also, you can decide whether you want to have your ads appear on desktop and tablets and smartphones. At this time, I, I don't have the smartphones. Again, that's something you might want to test with different ads. You could have an ad running just on desktops and have the exact same ad on smartphones and see which one does better. All of the rest of these things you can look at, um, but you probably just want to leave them the same except for the schedule. I'm not going to save that because I made a change I didn't want to make there. So, and let this load a little bit. And the, so the main thing, just like in Google Ads, you want or uh, AdSense, you want to be looking, checking your keywords every day to see how they're doing. It's taking pretty long to load. Apologize for that. So, okay. Oh, probably having a network issue already. Okay, I'm back with the Bing keywords that I am using. So I, I just picked 54 keywords, which is actually fairly low. If you start with a higher amount, you can see how they do over the week and just get rid of the ones that aren't performing well for you. So I've only gotten a few impressions at this point. Alpaca has gotten one impression. I just created this ad a few hours ago, so that's not um, unusual. So you'll see all the different keywords that I have in here. I will show you some ads that I created a while back for some other things so you can really see when an ad is running how it does. Okay, so here's an ad that I ran uh, a while back, and you can see that this one got this total of 15,000 impressions, 86 clicks. Uh, it was a weight loss type of ad I was running. Um, and so the click-through rate, obviously I'm going to search on that because that's pretty important. See here, weight loss drinks got 100% click through rate. And this one, 14 impressions, 5 clicks, that's pretty good. 35% click through rate. You know, all of these click through rates here are, are pretty, pretty darn good. So, anyway, I just wanted to sh sh for you to see what it looks like once you get a campaign running for a while. And also, it'll show you how much money that you've spent altogether. Something important to look at. Here's your totals. So, all good stuff. I am going to have a longer lecture uh, on placing direct ads. So, this is just more to talk about the keyword aspect of that. Okay, so at this point, you might be saying, okay, this is all great, uh, you know, if I wanted to place these kinds of ads, but what if I just want to sell my alpacas or my stud services? Can't I just use Open Herd or Alpaca Nation? For those of you who have already been in the business for a while or just starting, you may already be familiar with Open Herd or Alpaca Nation or a couple other of these listing aggregators. So, of course, yes, you could just use Open Herd and or Alpaca Nation for all your marketing. But the problem with those is that they people searching for your farm name or your specific alpaca, they have to know ahead of time and sp explicitly have to search on those things. So if they were to do that into, in Google, um, you might want to search on your farm name and see what comes up. Um, but think about somebody who just wants to go look at alpaca farms. They don't know what your farm name is. So they would either have to go directly to Open Herd or Alpaca Nation and search for your farm. Otherwise, they wouldn't necessarily find you if they were just looking for and searching for alpacas or alpaca farms. 
So my point is, is that by using a keyword research tool, you can put yourself in the place of an interested customer and think about what they would initially search on if they were new to the industry. For example, you might want to visit an alpaca farm for the first time and you might type in alpaca farm in Google. So as homework, I would suggest that you do this in Google and Bing and see what comes up on the first page. It's likely what you're going to see is farms that have their own website that and those that are on the first page have probably paid for those keywords like I showed you, like alpaca farms, for a pay-per-click ad campaign. Yes, you will also see Open Herd and Alpaca Nation on those searches, but it will only be a link to their general farm search page, just like if you were to go directly to those websites and you still have to search for a specific farm name or state. Another benefit of trying general searches in Bing and Google and Ask.com is it will give you a list of related search keywords that you may not have thought about before. And some of, the, some of these are called long tail keywords. And what that means is that these are phrases more than words. And an example of this would be the cost of owning an alpaca farm. Now you may not have thought of using that as a keyword, but if you do some of these searches, you will get some ideas. And the important thing about a long tail keyword is that there's not going to be a high amount of searches, but that also means that there's going to be low competition for bidding on those keywords. So you're more likely to rank on page one of Google or Bing if you use those long tail keywords. So for lesson three, I do have some homework for you. I want you to go out and try to use the Google AdSense Keyword Planner like I did and think about your niche keyword. If you are focusing on fiber or uh, knitted products, you know, whatever you would really like people to see when they search on you in Google. Try to think about what those keywords are and come up with some new keywords. And if you're really ambitious, um, go ahead and try to launch an ad, either in uh, AdWords or in Google, uh, I'm sorry, in Bing Ads. And just, you know, set it at $5 a day or $3 a day and just see how it does. And, you know, that's really the only way that you're going to learn is to put some out there, put some ads out there and just see how they go. And I don't want to forget to tell you, as I said before, if you do put some ads out there, make sure that you're checking them once a day for a while to see which ones are working, which ones you need to delete, uh, which ones you might want to up the bid price like I showed you. And then once you get it settled and you see that it's performing well, then just check on it once a week because search terms do change. So I just want to leave you with that understanding keywords and search engines. Yes, it can be intimidating, but I think with just some study and testing like I've shown you, um, it won't take long and soon you'll be able to rank on page one or two and those clicks will turn into sales. So thank you very much for sticking with me this long and I will see you in lesson four. Bye-bye. I forgot to add, I would love to know if you've done some of this homework you know, or even if you haven't, if you've done some of these ads before, please comment on either the Facebook site or on hub pages or on our uh, YouTube under this video. Please let me know if this has worked for you or if there's something that I didn't cover that you would like to see me cover in future lessons. And let me know how you're doing. I'd love to hear. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.